Hey, it's Steven from TripleLifestyle.com, and I'm going to show you how to make a perfect duplicate of Starbucks cold brew coffee at home. Now, when we use this method, what we're actually going to be making is a super concentrated cold brew, just like they do behind the scenes at Starbucks. So later on, we'll talk about how to dilute that a little bit to get it to taste exactly like it does in the store, and I'll also show you how I drink it to make an even better cup of coffee. And if you're wondering why a personal finance blogger is teaching you how to make coffee, Think about this for a second. If you can avoid spending $5 a day at Starbucks and invest that money into a total stock market index fund instead, over the course of 30 years, you'll be about $300,000 richer, give or take 100 grand or two. It can actually be a life-changing decision, but anyway, let's go make some coffee. All right, we're gonna need some stuff to get started and the coffee beans themselves are the most important part. I like to use Starbucks Espresso Dark Roast Whole Beans because they have a really rich chocolatey flavor that's perfect for cold brew. But we're going to have to use an absolutely ridiculous amount of coffee grounds to make this concentrate, so it's going to be really important that we get the best price possible on it. Now this might sound kind of weird, but I actually buy expired beans on eBay. They are way cheaper than buying these things at retail. You can get them in the big five pound bags like the one on the left, which are commercial bags, or the retail one pound bags on the right. You can buy in bulk on eBay as well. Uh, I'll drop some links below on where to find these, but basically as long as they're only about six months or so off their best buy date, they taste great um, and they're way cheaper. Since we are using whole beans, you're going to need a coffee grinder as well. Nothing fancy is necessary here. This one's mine. The most important thing is you want to make sure it has a coarse setting on it. You're also going to need a pitcher. The bigger the better, but it does have to fit in your fridge. Mine right here holds about 46 cups, which is around 11 liters. And lastly, you're going to need a filter or a brew bag of some kind. Uh, this might seem kind of unimportant, but actually it took me a while to find these exact ones that do the job perfectly. Honestly, I can't believe I'm about to recommend to you a glorified tea bag that costs more than $10 each. But these things right here actually have like exactly the right amount of porousness so that all your grounds make a nice strong coffee without leaving any sediment in it. So I really like these. I'm going to drop a link below on where to find them. So now what you're really here for, the actual recipe. So our recipe is going to be 20 cups or 4.7 liters of coarsely ground coffee. And if you don't use expired beans like me, you might be able to squeak by with just a tiny bit less coffee grounds, but honestly it's probably not going to change too much. It's 32 cups or 7.6 liters of filtered water. You don't really have to buy any bottled water or anything special for that. Just basic filter in your fridge is probably fine. Uh, and then that is together going to yield about 21 cups or 5 liters of cold brew concentrate in the end. Keep in mind you can always divide that recipe by 2 or any arbitrary number you want if you want to make a smaller batch. But for the size that we're doing, uh, you're definitely going to need two of those brew bags that I showed you earlier. They're only going to hold about 10 cups of ground coffee each comfortably. You don't want to stuff them full. Alright, so step one, go ahead and grind your beans. This is the part that's going to make your house smell really good. I recommend setting your grinder to its coarsest setting for this. Fill up your brew bags with those grounds. And tie off the top of those so that no grounds will escape when you immerse them in water. But not so tight that the grounds don't have any room to move around. You want them a little bit loose in there. Go ahead and toss your brew bags into your pitcher. And start pouring in your filtered water. So you want to fully submerge your brew bags and kind of massage or agitate them a little bit to make sure the grounds get wet all the way through. Cover up your pitcher and stick it in the fridge for somewhere between 21 and 26 hours. You can repeat that submersion and agitation process one or two more times during the brewing process to make sure all the grounds are getting access to water all the time. You don't want any of them to be dry or have no water flow through them. But don't agitate more than that because over agitation can cause cold brew to be bitter or cloudy. When the brewing process is done, hang your bags up to drain dry for 30 to 60 minutes each. You want gravity to do all the work here. Don't be tempted to squeeze the bag or do anything to speed up the process. That'll actually make your coffee a little bit more bitter. Keep your concentrate covered and refrigerated and it'll easily last a month or more. I like to dispense mine into a smaller pitcher so that when the big pitcher runs out, I've still got some left and I can start a new batch. 
Now for the fun part, which is preparing and drinking our cold brew. Uh, if you want yours to taste exactly like it does in a Starbucks store, you're actually going to have to dilute it with extra filtered water. So literally just pour some extra water in until it tastes right to you. A grande cold brew made using this recipe costs about 46 cents, compared to almost $4 for a cold brew of the same size in a Starbucks store. Personally, I kind of hate the way that Starbucks purposely dilutes their cold brew using extra water. So I like to drink mine straight up concentrate with creamer added but no water. Because of the fact that I'm drinking it a little stronger with the concentrate, I actually use half decaf beans in my brewing process so that I don't get crazy amounts of caffeine. My personal recipe for the perfect cup of cold brew is two parts cold brew concentrate and one part vanilla soy milk. So for example, you could do one cup of concentrate and half a cup of soy milk plus some ice to make your perfect cold brew. I also like to add Splenda personally, aka Sucralose, but I don't use the packets because they're actually more expensive. I use a liquid concentrate and I'll drop a link below on where to find some of that as well. If you prefer almond milk instead of soy, that's fine, but I highly recommend that you get a barista blend almond milk. A barista blend is basically like a thicker and creamier version of almond milk that's made specifically for coffee because your regular grocery store brand of almond milk is way too watery and it's going to make your coffee taste super diluted and weak. Hopefully this recipe will save you a ton of money over the years. If you want to learn a little bit more about saving and investing, traveling super cheap, and retiring early, definitely subscribe and check out tripofalifestyle.com.